one of my friends always says this, alcohol is the only drug that if you say no to it, people automatically assume that there's something wrong with you, which is just so funny. But I didn't drink, so I didn't fit in anymore to the, the crowds that I'd grown up with and, and I became a little bit of an outcast. I had to go and find a new group of friends. That is a type of growing pain. It doesn't mean that I am better than those people or they're worse than me. It might not be a great lifestyle choice, but it doesn't determine our characters. I know plenty of people who have been very heavy drinkers in the past or still people who go out clubbing, you know, two, three, four nights a week um, at the grand old age of 25 to 30, which I think is way too old. But they're great entrepreneurs and great people. It doesn't, it's not about personal value, but it's a type of growing pain and you will experience that when you become a reasonably successful entrepreneur. When you hit that 100k a year, what's that look at as 8,000 pounds a month, it takes you like 96 command or something like that. Like, you will have a massive stage of growing pains because the evil eye starts to come out, jealous friends, people that just want to see you do well but not better than them. Thankfully, I'm in an amazing circle. When I say I'm in an amazing circle, please don't confuse that as being a large circle. I have four, five close friends. It's probably my business partner, Paul, my mate, Kieran, I've trained with for years, Antonio, my friend from Malaga Tapas, he owns all those restaurants. My big friend, Stephen Ronaldi, he owns Primal Strength. My friend, Cole. Like, all the people I'm naming here are either high-level business owners or extremely good and well-paid for what it is that they do. High achievers. And there's, I don't think there's a accidental correlation that all of them are health and fitness conscious. All of them can fight, so we all train and stuff like that. So we're all on the same page with a lot of different things. That's my circle of friends. And to be honest, I don't feel like I need any more friends and who I have in my extended circle on top of that. Now, I went through a phase of having my friends from school. And by the way, don't misconstrue this as you have a bust up and you break away from your friends. Like That's not strictly what I'm saying, right? But you will change when you make money. You will change. I became, in some ways, arrogant. I became, in other ways, much more kind. I had more money to be able to give to people and do things with and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's parts of you that will change, right? And the problem isn't you changing. The problem is that your friends don't. It's not to be blamed on you for changing or becoming a more elevated version of yourself, which, by the way, will come with some of your bad traits getting slightly worse and good friends will help you manage them. Other friends will try and crucify you for them. Um, but you will grow out of certain people inside of your circle. Now, it becomes like watching someone drown, in a sense, is that that jealousy brings out evil in other people. And they will see you doing well, and because that they're not doing it for themselves, and because you're not deliberately dragging them along through that journey and forcing results out of them, they will vilify you, in a way. Now, when I say it's like watching someone drown, there is one piece of advice that I would like to think everyone knows. Sorry, I've got dry lips today. Um, a bit of advice that I would like to think everyone knows is that if you see someone drowning, the last thing you are meant to do is jump in to try and rescue that person. Now, we will all have our exceptions. There are multiple people in my life that I would jump in and gladly risk my life for and go against that advice. But generally across the board, that's the worst thing you can do is jump in. And the reason being is that someone, when faced with a life or death situation, is human nature to naturally do whatever it takes to ensure that you survive. And that could mean killing someone that you love, right? You see someone that you really love and care about drowning, you jump in because you want to be selfless and save their life. And you do so, but by ending your own life. Because in human nature, they're going to choose to live over you. It's not a cognitive thing. It's no longer a rational thought. It's something that they do. 